بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور deception upon deception they deceived our puppets in this world of manipulation we have to make sure that we are not being played we are not the puppets we are nafs, shaitan, environment, people of batil are controlling us and we take effect from Allah and His Rasul. We don't take effect from the propaganda and all the batil ideologies that are being promoted. Ittaqu firasat al-mu'min. Be wary of the firasat of a believer. The people of Iman don't just do things. They have hindsight. They've got a vision. Allah has given them a certain type of foresight and intuition where they can differentiate and identify what is good for them and what is beneficial and what is harmful. لا يلغ المؤمن من جحر واحد مرتين A believer is not bitten by the same hole twice. One person went to the doctor and he had a very heavy cold so the doctor presented a course of tablets, antibiotics it wasn't effective, he came back to the doctor for the second time. The doctor inspected him and decided to administer an injection. After a week, he came back again for the third time. So the doctor inspected him and I said, I need you to go home, have a hot bath, open the window and let the draft hit you. So the patient was shocked. He said, doctor, I'm going to get pneumonia. He said, well, at least I know how to cure pneumonia. I've got all the medication. I've got all the treatment for pneumonia. So at least one problem will solve. So a believer doesn't get caught. Sometimes something is said so much that we believe it. Even the people of Iman get caught. And the people of Batil want to instill because all the machines of propaganda are in their control. So eventually we get caught up and we start reacting how they want us to react. So we should not get caught by this deception, by this dunya, by this doka. In the day of Qiyamah, people will be brought. They'll have mountains, like the mountains of Tihama, of reward in Amal. And then when they will be brought in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِذَا جِئَ بِهِمْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ هَبَاءً That all the a'mal will dissolve, will vanish, will disappear. ثُمَّ قَزَفَهُمْ فِي النَّارِ And they will be flung into Jahannam. So Salim Muhammad said, Ya Rasulullah bi anta, O Nabi of Allah, tell me, هُلْ لَنَا هَأُولَاءِ أَقْوَامْ Tell us a description of this people حَتَّى نَعْرِفَهُمْ فَوَالَّذِي بَعَثَكَ بِالْحَكِّ إِنِّي أَتَخَوَّفُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنْهُمْ Because I have concern that I don't want to go in akhirat. I don't want to be part of this doka, this deception. I get trapped in their plans and I go to Jahannam. قَالَ يَا سَالِمْ أَمَا إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَسُومُونَ وَيُصَلُّونَ وَلَكِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا إِذَا عُرِضَ لَهُمْ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الْحَرَامِ they used to do a lot of ibadat, fast, read salah, but when haram came in front of them, wathabu alayhi, they jumped for it, they leaped for it, they pounced for it, they darted towards it. Just a simple thing nowadays, every year I need to upgrade, I need to go to this upgrade and this phone and this phone and this phone. Don't we think we are wasting our money? In the olden days, that same phone would last you two years, three years, four years. What's so different? But now once a person gets in that mindset of upgrading, then we get to used to a certain standard. Yet the hadith is saying, وَثَبُوا عَلَيْهِ Now every new thing which will increase our ecstasy in guna and ma'asyat, so we can enjoy our disobedience, we rush into it. Now I need that new place, my screen, so I can disobey him Allah more. I need that higher resolution. Now with facial recognition, we are exposing ourselves even more.
we put in ourselves at risk even more you notice on the many of the screens when the facial recognition pops up there's a one eye and intelligence officers have put tape on the camera so we thinking they are making our lives easier it's not to make your life easier it's to control you and to to identify you and there's a lot of planning behind it so the people of iman are always one up not worth abu alay that we say we people of akhirat but we jump in towards what the people of dunya are saying فَأَدْحَضَ اللَّهُ عَمَالَهُمْ And thereby they wipe out all their amal. So Malik bin Dinar said, هَذَا وَاللَّهِ النفاق. This is a sign of hypocrisy. So Mu'alla was there and he took بِلِحْيَةِ He grabbed him by his beard and said, سَدَقْتَ وَاللَّهِ يَا بَا يَحْيَى Definitely, definitely, they fasting, they making ibadat. Yet, when the opportunity comes to disobey Allah in the darkness of the night, the opportunity comes to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is a type of hypocrisy where you compromise on your deen. It's double standards. A person just pounces and leaps. He rushes towards ma'asiyat and disobedience of Allah, which is a cause of anger of Allah, and which is a cause of conditions to change on earth. So, amalukum, amalukum, my amal is a governing factor for the conditions on earth, for the ummah, and for myself. So, a believer is wary of the fact that I should not be a one to compromise the sanctity of the ummah. Double standards don't work. One person went to the doctor and he said, The doctor gave me six months to live. So, I negotiated with the doctor. I said, You know what? I'm earning this salary. I can pay you all in a year's time. So the doctor said, okay, come back. Let me see. I'll do tests again. He came back and the doctor gave him an extra six months more. Means you won't die in six months. Now you'll die in one year. You'll die in one year. So double standards don't work. Al-mu'minu bayna makhafatain. A believer is constantly between worries and fears, but two primary fears. Bayna ajalin qad mada. Your life has passed, لا يدري ما الله ساني أنفيه That this life that has passed, how will Allah deal with my past because I am answerable? And number two, وبين أجل قد بقية That the little but life that we have left, لا يدري ما الله قاد أنفيه He does not know what Allah's decision and decree will be with regards to what's left. So a believer is always in a different state and frame of mind. So, you need to prepare and take adequate provisions. لِنَفْسِهِ مِن نَفْسِهِ To control one's own nafs for one's own sake, for one's akhirat. Because once you leave this nafs, this nafs will wipe you out. Nabi alayhi salam is giving us solutions. So number one, if you got this fear and you are amongst the people of Iman, one is control yourself and your nafs. وَمِن دُنْيَاهُ لِآخِرَتِهِ That you derive benefit from this temporary world for the eternal year after. Capitalize on this opportunity which Allah has given you. وَمِن حَيَاتِهِ لِمَوْتِهِ and exploit and see the opening and see the opportunity of this life before death overtakes you. وَمِن شَبَابِهِ لِهَرَمِهِ And take opportunity, exploit this youth while you have it before old age overcomes you. So we need to have this conscience and this concern and this worry for our akhirat and the akhirat of the whole of mankind. But a person who has this focus and this vision and this foresight to understand that Allah has sent me with a great responsibility, then a person will worry about themselves, their family and the whole of mankind. And if a person doesn't have this fikr, 
Then even putting other people's dunya, forget akhirat, even compromising other people's dunya, a person would not mind harming other people in dunya. And this, even if a person is supposed to be a good-natured person, you see one doctor was called 3 a.m. in the morning, a house call, there was a snowstorm, he went out, he complained to his wife with much difficulty, he left his house and he went to the patient's home. He examined the patient and as he was leaving he said, send for your lawyer, relatives and friends and get your well done immediately. So when he got home, his wife asked him, it wasn't so bad, he said it was the worst day of my life. It was the worst day of my life. She said, was it that bad? Thinking that the patient, maybe his situation was so bad, he had to get the lawyers and prepare the world and get ready to die. He said, no, the patient was perfectly fine. The medication I gave him would have sufficed. But I didn't want to be the only one who would be called out on such a storm. I didn't want the only one to be suffering. I needed everybody else to suffer as well. فَإِنَّ الدُّنْيَا خُلِقَدْ لَكُمْ دِنَّ نَبِيَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ said the dunya has been created for you. Dunya is our slave. وَأَنْتُمْ خُلِقَتُمْ لِلْآخِرَةِ Don't forget your objective. Don't forget your priority. Don't forget why Allah has sent you into this world. Am I here for dunya or akhirat? Some people, it takes them the entire life to realize that they've been making the wrong effort in the wrong direction. It should not be that we realize just at the time of death. Even if in the dunya we line, we see there's certain professions. A person is a lawyer, now he changes his profession. He's a doctor, he changes his profession. He becomes a businessman. One, one person, uh, a doctor, the pipe burst in his house, so the plumber went to fiddle for about half an hour, he gave a bill of $600. The doctor said, $600 for half an hour, that's ridiculous. Are you crazy? I don't even make so much as a doctor. So the plumber re replied, neither did I when I was a doctor. Neither did I when I was a doctor. وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِي مَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ مِنْ مُسْتَعْتَبٍ that after death there is no second chance, second opportunity. You're unable to make amends. Wala ba'd al maut min darin. And after death there's no house, no abode, no residence. Illan Jannah awin nar. Only Jannah and Jahannam. So we need to realize and get direction. وقال عيسى عليه السلام لا يستقيم حب الدنيا والآخرة في قلب مؤمن that it's not possible to combine dunya and akhirat in one heart so we have to understand either I want dunya or akhirat كما لا يستقيم الماء والنار في إناء واحد like how you cannot get water and fire in the same container this heart cannot contain dunya and akhirat the people of Iman have to prioritize. So, it's completely opposite. But it's the real story, the people who see the real story, they realize the objective. That the real story is, I am here for Akhirat. Somebody walked into the petrol station store and screamed, does anyone own the Rottweiler? It's outside. My Chihuahua killed it. So the owner screamed and said, how is it possible for your puny small dog to kill my mighty, ferocious dog? So he says, it seems he got stuck in your dog's throat. It seems he got stuck in your dog's throat. So to know the inside story, the people of Iman know the inside story. And that's why they're making effort in that direction. Otherwise, if you get the story wrong, you'll be parishan, stress. Dunya will have stress and akhirat also stress. A man went to a vet to collect his sick dog, so the vet came carrying the dog. And the vet said, I'm really sorry, but I'll have to put your dog down. I'm really sorry, I'll have to put your dog down. So the owner burst into tears, crying, and with a sobbing voice, he said, but why, doctor? He said, he's too heavy, he's 
do heavy. He meant I need to put him down on the floor. What he understood. So that's how we've been told. Ihdharu dunya fa innaha asharu min harut wa marut. Beware of dunya for its temptation is worse. Its jadu, its black magic is worse than harut and marut. That a person is in the wrong, they don't even know they're in the wrong. They think so their wrong is the right. So a person loves their entire life in this deception. Somebody saw an electrician coming up the driveway. So from the window he started screaming. You one day late, you're supposed to fix the doorbell yesterday. You're supposed to fix the doorbell yesterday. I waited all day. So the electrician scream, I know, I apologize. But I came yesterday, I rang the bell a few times. No one opened, so I left thinking nobody was at home. I left thinking nobody was at home. You there to fix the doorbell. You there to fix the doorbell. So a person is in such a darker deception, they don't even know that they're in that deception. Sometimes some people try to con others, but they think so they got it under control, but they get caught out. So it should not be that we think so we live in life properly. I got it all organized. But if you don't have your akhirat organized, then you're gone, you're finished. The boss asks the employee, do you believe in life after death? So he said, yes, sir, 100%. He said, well, that's good because after you left early yesterday to go to your grandmother's funeral, she called looking for you. She called looking for you. He's trying to deceive the boss. At the end, you'll get caught out. Person thinks so, they deceive in Allah, they've got it under control. But when it comes to the crunch, do I really have it under control? I was returning from one Middle Eastern country, and the person sitting next to me was a consultant that did mega projects for the shuyukh, the big sheikhs. So he was giving me a description of one of the projects. So he said we were doing the guest house of the palace of the sheikh. So we imported special flooring, a special type of marble floor, which we had to get Moroccan installers. So he said it cost a lot of money and there was a lot of work behind it and to source it was very difficult. But after sourcing the product and getting it installed, when the inspection time came, then we were told to remove the entire flooring. Why? Because the floor, the marble did not match with the lines, means the lines of the marble floor were not concurrent. So all that work and resources, everything we spent time, although obviously the sheikh would have reimbursed them, but for us to understand that just the lines in a very rare marble floor in which special technicians had to do the installation, yet he was unhappy. He said it was a small problem. He said then when he came there was a noise. This is the guest house, not the palace, the guest house. So what was his problem? He said there was a noise. I said, what was the noise? He said the aircon system made a noise. It affected him. So he said a few hundred meters away, we had to build an entire new structure just to house the motors for the aircon. Because he didn't want to hear the noise that was in the guest house. What has happened to the people of Iman? So let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us be patient when difficulties come. As sabra al bala, when difficulties come, ma ruzika abdun khairul lahu wa la usa min as sabr. Nobody has been granted a gift more beneficial and more better for them than being patient. Being patient and staying away from guna. Being patient by staying away from ma'asiyat and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by making Toba was Sabru Diya. Sabr is a light for a believer. Every matter is good for him. If Asabatu Sarra Shakara, good conditions make shukar. 
Asabadu dharra difficulty sabr fakana khayra law both both conditions good and bad a believer wins wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin